We're trusting Him. We're trusting in Him, church, because we believe His Word. And we believe what He says is truth. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. This morning, I'm going to take you into the book of John. We're going to go to John chapter 20 this morning. John chapter 20. And honestly, the text that I'm about to read to you is, is the same text that I read to you possibly about, I don't know, three months ago maybe. And it was back when we were talking about the days that Jesus spent here showing himself unto his disciples in the 40 days after the resurrection, before his ascension to heaven. And we're going to come to a spot where he showed himself and to a disciple who was that was was really not wanting to believe until he saw. Amen? Was not wanting to believe until he saw. And that starts in verse 24 of John chapter 20. Here's what the Bible says in John chapter 20, verse 24. It says this. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. You see, what happened was, is Jesus came in and showed himself to the disciples, and Thomas just wasn't there. He didn't see it. It didn't, you know, so he didn't believe that, that it was even true or even real. So here's what he says in verse 25. He says, The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not, he says, I will not believe. And then after eight days, the Bible says, again his disciples were with him, and Thomas was with them this time. How convenient. Thomas was with them this time. As if Jesus didn't know this, right? No, Jesus knew this. That Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus. Now you got to remember, the doors were shut. But then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst of them. And he said, peace be unto you. So what that tells me is Jesus appeared. Yes. Yes. Amen. It also tells me that the, the resurrected body isn't subject to the same rules as the earthly body. Yes. Come on now. Yes. He says, peace be unto you. Then in verse 27, then said to Thomas, this is Jesus, he said to Thomas, reach hither thy finger. Now, think about it for a moment. Thomas was with the disciples. Jesus wasn't with them. When Thomas was saying, hey, I'm not going to believe until this, 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 and this takes place. Yes. Now Jesus is repeating something supernaturally that he received. Come on now. Yeah. 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 Come on. What he said, he said, then said he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side. And church, I want you to hear this this morning. I want you to understand this this morning. That this same thing that Jesus is telling Thomas, I want you to hear from me this morning and I want you to apply it to your life today. Yes. Yes. Amen. Remember three fingers pointing back at your pastor? We will all join in together and receive this today. Here's what he says. Be not faithless. Everybody say, be, be not, not faithless. Then he says, but believing. Yes. Yes. Be not faithless, but believing. Yes. Church, I, I believe that there's a lot of people in the world today that will not believe right. unless they can see it. Yes. Unless they can touch it. Yes. Unless they can smell it. Yes. Unless they can hear about it. And let me tell you, only half of what people see, only half of what people hear, 
Only half of what people can touch, they will even believe. Amen? Jesus says something to Thomas that is just amazing to me after this. It is something that I believe that I have had a divine revelation. And my prayer is today that the Holy Spirit, as He's moving throughout these pews in here, will bring you to a divine revelation and understanding of His Word that I'm about ready to share to you. Amen. It's powerful. It's needful in each one of our lives. Yes. Here's what He says. Jesus says unto him in verse 29, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. That's where a lot of people are today. Yes. Yes. But he says this. He doesn't say blessed. In my Bible, he says blessed. Yes. Everybody say blessed. blessed. Now, now you've got to understand this. Blessings come from the Lord. Yes. Here's what he says. He says, blessed are they that have not seen and have, and have yes. believed. Yes. 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 Do you get that revelation this morning? Yes. If you believe in Jesus Christ, church, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you are blessed. Yes. No matter how you feel, yes. no matter what you see, yes. no matter what situation yes. that you're going through, yes. no matter anything that's going on in your life, yes. you are still blessed. You might say, Pastor, I don't feel blessed. It doesn't matter how you feel. It's all about the truth of God's Word. And the truth of God's Word says, if you believe in Jesus, then you are blessed. Yes. 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 Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you right now, knowing that, God, that you are the author and finish of our faith, Lord. Knowing that, God, that you have given us this word today, Lord God, so that we are able to pull up to your table, Lord God, and we can live a, a life that is blessed, Lord. Father, my prayer is today that nothing that is said from this pulpit this morning will fall upon deaf ears. But even those online today, Father, will receive your, your goodness and your Holy Spirit will go out and move and touch and minister, Lord God, to each and every person that is hearing this morning the words that you have shared for me to share, Lord God. We thank you, God. We humble ourselves before you and we tell you, Lord, to, to take control. We give you, Father God, that... that um, uh, we give you, Lord God, ourselves today for you to minister to us and fill us full, Father, of your goodness and your mercy. God, we thank you once again for all that you have done. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Blessed. 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 Yes. If you believe in Jesus, you're blessed. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now, church, I want to go a little bit further with you this morning. Jesus is the Word. Yes. Yes. Amen? Yes. The Bible tells us in John 1, 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word. Yes. The Word was with God, and the Word was with Amen? Amen. Yes. It, it, it says that. If we jump down to verse 14 of the book of John chapter 1, it says, And the Word was made flesh, yes. and it dwelt among us, yes. and we beheld the glory, the glory of the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. Yes. Now, I didn't put 15 up there, but if you jump to 15, if you're following along in your Bible there, it says, and John bared witness. Yes. Yes. John testified of this. John saw this. John understands this. John had a revelation from God that the Word itself was made flesh, and that flesh dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory, the glory of the only begotten Son of the Father. Jesus 
Jesus. Now, now church, don't lose me. This is the word that he was talking about. And if we believe in Jesus and we believe in the word, which is the same thing, we are blessed. Amen. We are blessed. Listen, Tom, you said it this morning. You may not understand it. You may not see it. You may not know it. But the truth is, is that it, it's what the Word of God says. Yes. It's the blessings in, in, in what God has for us. Every chapter in the book is mine. Yes. Amen? Yes. Every verse in every line, yes. it's for me. Yes. And you have to get yourself to a point in your trust and in your belief and in your faith to know that this Scripture is for me. Make it personal. Yes. Yes. It's right. That the Bible is written, praise God. The Bible has been written for you. It's been written for me. Amen. It's for us to receive and to bring blessings to us. Right? Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the Word of God. For without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Amen? Yes. For we must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently, yeah. that yeah. diligently yeah. seeks yes. Him. Yes. This yes. is Scripture, church. Yes. Do you want to be rewarded? Yes. Then build your faith by listening to the Word of God. Amen? Yes. Yes. And, and let your blessings start to overflow in your life. Hallelujah. We are blessed because we believe. Yes. Amen. Here, say that with me this morning. We are blessed because we believe. Amen? Praise the Lord. You might be going through some lack in your life. You may be going through some things that, that, that you, you really need some supply. Listen to, to what Matthew 6 and verse 30 says. Turn into your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. Now church, I want to show you how to build your faith here. How to receive your blessing. You might be saying, Pastor, I, I don't see it. It's not happening. That, that's where we live today. We, we live where, where people have to see it, they have to feel it, they have to hear about it before they believe. But Jesus said, blessed are those that haven't seen and still believe. Yeah. You might be saying, I don't have the things that I am in need of. But chapter 6, verse 30 tells us, Jesus says it very cleanly, clearly here. He says, wherefore if God so clothed the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Then he goes on to say this, take no thought, he says, take no thought saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that ye have need of all these things. Yes. But Jesus says this, Hallelujah. But seek ye first the yes. kingdom of God yes. and His righteousness. Yes. And guess Amen. what? Hallelujah. The promise is, is that all of these things that yes. you are looking for is going to come to pass. Yes. Amen? Amen. Because the word cannot lie. The blessings will come. Therefore, you don't have to worry about where your next meal is coming from. You don't have to worry about the cupboard that the supply is starting to get a little bit deep. But you can stand in the blessings of God and say, I believe that Jesus is my provider, that God is my source, and He will take care of these because I'm seeking Him first. Amen. Amen? And then, maybe that might not get you to believe. Maybe that might be very difficult for
for you to, to understand how can all of this stuff happen? What's I mean, how can this be? Then you turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Second Corinthians chapter nine, not eight, chapter nine. Verse eight says this. First off, Paul wants you to know that God is able. Amen. Everybody say that with me this morning. God is able. Right? Then he says this God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That ye that's you. Got it? That's me. That ye, always having all sufficiency in everything, it says, all things may abound to every good work. Yes. Amen? Yes. This is a promise, church. And this is blessings for us if we receive this in our life. Because God wants to bless us and He wants you to know that He's got it. That you don't have to worry about where it's coming from. You don't have to put um, extra energy in thinking about this because God is able even through humanity to bless you, to minister to you, to share with you. But then you get to thinking, I wanted God to do this. And you think to yourself, well, how in the world can, can I be blessed if this person did it for me? Is it even good? I mean, that's what humanity starts to think. Right, right, right. Amen? Yeah. It reminds me of the guy that was in the flood that was standing up on his roof of his house and he kept saying, God, please save me. All of a sudden, a boat comes by and the people in the boat says, jump on, we'll save you. And the guy says, uh-uh, I promised, I mean, God promised me that he would save me. A few minutes later, a guy with a helicopter comes by to get him. And, and he says, jump on, I'll save you. And, God, and the guy says, no, God said that I'll, I'll save you. He's the one saving me. And then the water came up so high that it drowned the guy on the top. And when he got to heaven, he said, God, I thought you was going to save me. He said, listen, buddy, I sent you a boat and I sent you a helicopter. And you refused them both. So don't think about that. Amen? That's what we're talking about here. Amen? God can minister through people to bless us. That's what He wants to do. And if we don't understand if it's good or not, we need to go to James 1.17. Go to James 1.17. And see what the Bible says in James 1.17. You like turning in your Bibles? Yeah. Yeah. James 1.17 says this, Every good gift and every perfect gift yes. is from above yes. and comes down from the Father of light with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Yes. Church, this is where our blessing can come from. Yes. Amen. Amen? Every good gift and every perfect gift is from the Father above. Yes. Yes. Amen. It comes down from God. I want to tell you something. The devil doesn't ever want to bless you with anything that's going to cause your faith to grow in God. Right. 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 Know this. He's not going to do that. So we praise the Lord though. However God chooses to bless us. And even though church we don't feel it. Even though we don't see it. The blessings can come. Amen. You might be struggling with your, with your faith right now. Because maybe you may not have enough money for the end of the month. And, and just possibly, it's all the bills are starting to pile up. And your, your money situation is calling for this and calling for that. And, and you just don't have it. And you refuse to, to give when, when the offering plate comes around. Because the fact is, is you don't have enough money to pay your bills as it is. You know, I want to tell you something. Pay your bills. Yeah. But the first bill is God. Come on, yeah. down your time. Yeah. It belongs to God. Yeah. Now let me show you this. Where blessings come. You might be thinking, Pastor, you're all wet. Well, 
I am sweating a little bit. <laughs> but I know what the Word of God says. Yes. And I'm talking to you this morning about blessings. Yes. You can't be blessed of God if you go against His Word. Amen. Amen. You have to obey His Word yes. for blessings to come. Yes. Amen. Amen. Philippians 4.19. Go to Philippians 4.19. It's right after Ephesians. Okay. Philippians 4.19. But listen to this. Here is a here, here is a, um, a witness of the Apostle Paul knowing the blessings of sowing and reaping. Yes. Amen? Amen? In this verse, Paul is telling them the gifts that he receives is not gifts for him because he is in lack and he is in, in, in want. He tells us that the other people have already supplied that need for him and he believes that and he knows, I want to tell you because the Apostle Paul knows the blessings of, of sowing and reaping, Amen. that he says, though, the reason that I'm, I'm wanting you to give is because so that you can, can put it into your account yes. of sowing and reaping. Yes. But here's what he says in verse 19. Now, but my God yes. shall supply all your need yes. according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yes. My God yes. shall supply all your need yes. according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. And then if we switch back over to Luke, let's see what Jesus says here. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. This is where the blessings come, church. They come from believing the Word. Yes. yes. They come from believing the Word of God. Right. Chapter 6, verse 38, Jesus says this, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Good measure. Good measure. Press down, shaking together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Amen. Amen. The blessings of sowing and reaping is you sow much to get a huge harvest. Yes. Right. You sow little, you get a little harvest. Yes. Do you see that? The blessings are in your hands. Yes. Come on now. Yeah. To believe what the scriptures tell you. Right. But when I say scriptures, I'm talking about the Word of God. Yes. When you believe everything in the Word church, then you will be blessed. You say, Pastor, again, I don't feel blessed. Well, it's time where you get your feelings in line with what the Word of God says, and you yes. will be. You will feel blessed. Yes. You will be encouraged. Yes. If you don't feel blessed, call yourself blessed. Yes. Because you call yourself blessed because you're not blessed. Come on now. Yes. You are blessed because yes. the Word says you're blessed. Yes. Yes. It's that easy. Yeah. Amen. I don't know how else to say it. It's that easy. Yeah. Maybe you're just in fear. Maybe you're just in fear for whatever reason whatsoever. But let me show you blessings if you believe the word. Isaiah 41.10. Very easily. Isaiah 41.10. Says it best. It says to fear not. You want to know why? Fear not because I am with you. Yes. Yes. Amen. That's the word. That's what, what the Bible says. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, 
For I am thy God. Yes. I guess what? I will strengthen thee. Yes. And I will help thee. <laughs> yes. I will uphold thee yes. with the right hand yes. of my yes. righteousness. Yes. If you need help, God is your help. Yes. If you need strength, God is your strength. Yes. Amen. If you need provision, God is your provision. Yes. If you're looking for a source, God is your source. Yes. Yes. But we are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. Maybe for some reason, after hearing everything that you've heard this morning, maybe you're still not blessed. I don't see how that can be because the truth of God's word is a blessing. Yes. And Jesus says, blessed are those. Blessed, blessed, not blessed, blessed yes. are those that haven't seen and believed. Yes. But maybe you're still not blessed. I want to tell you, church, we're blessed because God's word says we are blessed. Yeah. And we are blessed because our Heavenly Father wants us to be blessed. Yes. Amen? Yeah. Hey, go all the way back to the book of Numbers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> go back to the book of Numbers where, we, where we're going to see where the uh, uh, God tells Moses to say unto Aaron to bless the people. Yeah. God said it to Moses. Numbers chapter 6. Numbers Chapter 6, that would be Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Got it? Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. There it is. Number 6. Here's what the Bible says. Start in verse 22, if you're there. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, and unto his sons, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift you up his countenance upon thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Do you see that? I want to tell you, there's probably not one person in here that's an actual Israelite. We're all Gentiles. We are. And, and if you've been following along with us on our Wednesday evening study in the book of Galatians, Paul shows us that in Galatians that the Gentiles are heathens. Come on now. But we've been engrafted in. We've been set free from that. We're no longer heathens. Amen. But we are the apple of God's eyes. And no, we are no longer Gentiles. We are fellow citizens and heirs with Jesus. We are joint heirs with Jesus. Amen. And we have a father who owns a cattle on a thousand hilltops and also owns the hilltops in which they stand, yes. and we are joint heirs with Jesus. Yes. Come on, church. Yes. We have been engrafted into the fellowship of God, yes. and our, our home is eternal glory street, as I've already said, in heaven. Yes. Amen? And God wants His people. Everybody say, I'm God's person. I'm God's person. Or should I say, I'm God's people. Yes. However you want to say it. We are God's people. Yes. And he tells Moses to tell Aaron yes. to tell his people they are blessed. Yes. Yes. Amen. They are blessed. Amen. They are blessed. Yes. Church, we are blessed coming. We're blessed going. Yes. We're blessed inside. We're blessed outside. Yes. We're blessed running we're blessed walking. Man. Come on now, church. We are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. Yeah. Everybody say, I am blessed. Yeah. Give the Lord a big yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord, church. The revelation that I preach.
praying for that you would receive today is that without seeing, you still believe. Yes. Amen. Without feeling, you still believe. Amen? Amen. Without hearing, you still believe. Amen. We have, church, the Word of God that tells us, which is Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of the Father, that tells us, blessed are they that haven't seen and believe. Yes. Be not faithless, but believe. Yes. Let's bow our heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you this morning knowing and trusting and believing, Father, in everything, God, that you have spoken this morning. That, God, that we can pull right up to your table today, Lord. No matter what situation that we are going through. No matter what we feel. No matter what we are hearing. We will stand in amazement. And we will believe, Lord God. We'll believe by faith. That your word says, God. That we are Father, if there is someone here today within the sound of my voice who is having a very difficult time believing this, Lord, again, my prayer is that you would send your Holy Spirit to them, that you would draw them to an altar of repentance, that your word will go forth into their hearts and lives, that they will change what they think, and they will start to believe in the Word of God, which cannot lie. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I always do before we go into our last song and in our, our time of communion, I always want to give someone an opportunity to make the Lord, to, to accept the Lord as their personal Savior. If there's anyone out there online, if there's anyone in here that wants a relationship with Jesus, the Bible says all you have to do is ask and believe. Amen. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, If thou wilt will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. All that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is where we start. Amen. This is where your faith is starting to be built. Where you have faith to believe that Jesus is who he says he is, and that he will do what he says that he will do. And if you have that, even that mustard grain seed of faith, as the Bible talks about, you can Tell this mountain to be moved yes. Yes. and Amen. to be cast out. Amen? Amen? Now I'm telling you, all you have to do is believe and ask Christ in. Amen. And 1 John 1, 9 says, If you will confess your sins, He is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Yes. So this morning, if you believe in your heart, just repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I need you as Savior. I confess my sins. I ask you to come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Church, if you prayed that, you can believe that Jesus came into your heart. Whether you feel like it or not, by default, his word is truth. By default, he is there. Amen? Now we do what 2 Peter says. Grow in grace, the knowledge of our Lord and Savior.